No. Okay, I was a little bit teary at the end. Because um, he was like, uh, saying that a lot of what drives technology, I'll have to read through it, but what, a lot of what drives technology, the technology is human purpose. Because, I mean, we don't make technology unless it fulfills our particular needs and purpose. Mm. Um, but you're saying when post singularity, when we actually remove all our constraints and pitfalls and, you know, all our things like, you know, mortality and disease and scarce resources, when we remove yeah. all that and then we just open, you kind of lose a sense of purpose. And so he was saying that now, because we're recording so much of our lives, so much of this time, and this is really the first time we've ever done that in history, that our future generations will actually look back at this time to decide what purpose is and maybe what their future purpose might be going forward. So this time right now, he was saying, could be actually the, you know, Zenith, the top. Yeah. <laughs> this could actually decide the rest of humans' future. Yeah. Human kind of future of like post singularity sort of thing. I, I love that idea, the, 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 especially with the, the recording thing. Like that is just incredible. That mm. uh, one of the things here that we are really living in a time right now where a large fraction of all human endeavors are recorded, yeah. and it's just going to grow and I'd say probably well roughly exponentially from now on until nearly everything we do is recorded. And I mean we're at the the forefront yeah. of it. I mean you look at historians. I mean it's such a bitch to actually like look what happened like the 1500s mainly because it's all about hearsay it's like can you trust this source can you do that yeah when you have like recordings like this especially like us right now it's it's kind of cool because we have it yeah we're a little scary because this will be existing for Forever. all eternity yeah you can't get rid of this so. yeah like hi grand 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 grandchildren penis or futures whatever it is yeah. you are it'll probably still be us i think we're going to be involved hopefully We'll oh, the other but, thing we should uh, mention yeah. is that oh, this had this thought um, while we were watching it because um, he was talking about how intelligence is kind of a very abstract concept. Mm. That was the third thing. Okay, what sorry. is intelligence? <laughs> what is intelligence? Jesus. Yes. Like, intelligence is very abstract. So like, close. it doesn't really mean anything. When we talk about, particularly with, in regards to artificial intelligence, when we want an artificial intelligence, we want a human-like intelligence. Yeah. Yes! That's the one. He was saying, oh, yeah, yeah. He was saying that a lot of computers right now and a lot of what computers do, even mathematics, he was saying, it's already far, far superior to human intelligence. It's just... And he was saying, like, it, would, it wouldn't pass the Turing test because it's just too It's too smart. It's too smart. You would think how it. great's that? Yeah. I mean, how great is that? And it's like... Really? Yeah, we've kind of transcended the Turing test, but no, no, look, we're, we're working our software until we can actually operate at your level. Yeah. And I guess that's the key of what you were saying right there. Yeah, so AI is all about now um, bringing it down, kind of, to a human level that's so we can understand. Yeah. Like, what, what was his example in the thing? Oh, yeah, um... The, he was saying that doing uh, an integral yeah doing an integral or something like that he, he, it was just brute forcing the approach no, and he, no he jumps using mathematical models yeah, yeah, it, well, yeah. When, when they show the human process or the process back to humans it needed more computation to actually show how it did it to humans in our steps how we'd understand yeah so they fake it yeah they totally fake it so there's all this computational knowledge to actually give you the answer then there's more computational stuff on top to actually make the answer or how they got to the answer yeah. understandable in our so the, so the human can understand it yeah so yeah. essentially it's using lots of computational cycles to actually dumb itself down so we can interact yeah. with it and I think that's what AI is going to be all about is yeah like we just had I, and again talking about all the intelligence and stuff like um, I mean every other every other animal on the, on the planet has a brain and has some kind of intelligence happening but we see it as completely different compared to dumb <laughs> I don't have a brain. I'm a zombie. I'm, I'm just imaginary right now. You're talking to yourself. Okay. It's true. I always feel that way anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah but everything, I, yeah. Let's explain the thought. Uh, the internet right now could very well be an artificial intelligence. It like is. A, a, a super brain that but is incredibly, incredibly intelligent. It's just, it's operating on a different level. The, the, the thought that I have it's, just thought of before mm -hmm. was that we can't talk to dogs, right? We, we can't, like we can roughly understand, but we can't really talk to dogs because we're smarter than the dog. Now, what happened? Well, I, I'd, I'd say we are. <laughs> anyway, let's just say that what happens if there's like another greater intelligence out here, say the internet and all of that, but sure, we can see roughly where the internet's going or roughly what it's doing, but we can't actually talk to it because it's a greater intelligence than yeah. us. Like, where the dog? Well, it's also operating on in completely different levels. Yeah, well, the same like, way that we are to a dog. Yeah. It's that type of step. 
Well, so I like the idea of looking at the internet right now is like, it's a brain, but it's just ones and zeros. It's electrical activity, all operating very much with all these tiny algorithms, because mm. all these software programs are running their own thing and transferring, transferring data back and forth using electrical activity. But, um, I mean, we can't talk to it. No, because we can't actually say what it is and we think it's so because we talk in this primitive you know push air about, out of yeah. our mouths it's not exact it's really yeah. not yeah. like even talking right now like talking to you and talking it's to people out here yeah. hey, <laughs> you have no idea what I'm actually saying like no one does it's, it's, it's all conceptual really hard. Yeah. but that's why like you know rhetoric is such an important tool yeah. <laughs> which I don't have but <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, it's, it's that's where it comes down to it's kind of the, the computer the machine is going to start to dumb itself down to actually interact with us. And then as Stephen Wolfram said as well, that I think it's gonna start dumbing itself down even further to interact with animals and plants and Absolutely. every other matter. It's gonna start interacting with that until it doesn't need it anymore. And that's where some interesting issues arise. Perhaps. That's taking it a bit well, far, but... Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing we are saying on top of that, the way it could actually be dumbing itself down we say dumbing itself down, like bring it to our level so we can yeah. actually understand what it's talking yeah, about. I guess it's not dumbing itself down, it's just making its language understood by us. Yeah. Um, the semantic web. Mm. Talked about this before, look it up again. Um, essentially, the semantic web will be about uh, using ontologies and basically turning all our, our abstract language and scribblings and stuff that we put into the computer, like you know, words, language, um, letters, all that. Um, actually connecting it and making it machine readable. Yeah. So when we say when we say the word dog, like that means so many things, and when you, it means different things to everyone. To, yeah, everyone based on their experience, based on you know their smell, you know what dogs they've seen, all that sort of stuff. I think it might dog. Yeah, and then you, you string that into an entire sentence, and that becomes a concept that's very very abstract, mm -hmm. which computers can't understand. You have to, you have to. It has to dumb itself down. But the semantic web will link. Essentially, all once it's mature, it'll link all the data, all the text on the web, into a human format, yeah. but machine uh, readable. So it'll understand. It human. creates concepts. That's what it really, yeah. really does. Yeah, that it allows you to put concepts toward each word. Like, I mean, the greatest thing I, I think one of the greatest things that Twitter has actually brought us is the idea of like 140 characters conveys so much information. That like the word dog. Mm -hmm the amount of information you can actually put there, and it's different for each individual person. I mean, there's gigabytes, if not terabytes, not petabytes of like information with just three freaking letters. Mm. And that's what the semantic web can actually do, is link it all together in a structured way yeah. and make the machine and talk to us. Yeah, that's why I think our, what the AI we're searching for, which is our intelligence, human-like yeah. level, human -like level intelligence, will be the semantic web. Because that's how we can actually communicate it. Because the superior intelligence is already here with yeah. that machine and this machine and all the other machines. It's only when we can talk to it that it becomes AI. Yeah. And maybe with a little bit of recommendation engine. Because it can they could just feed it to you without even you asking. You know, that's good. Um, that's you mentioned, the, wait, wait. Oh, well, yeah, yeah that's, that's it. The that, that's the singularity topic. topic. And I will mention a few uh, things that are coming. Just say, yeah, um, there's a singularity summit in the States coming up on, it's in San Francisco, go look it up. Uh, if, you're, if you're in the States, August 14th to 15th. But I actually found, and this is amazing, they're actually doing a Singularity Summit in Australia. Like, in, in Melbourne. Um, around the same time. No, no, hang on. September no, no, no. 10th, 11th, and 12th. Um, but go to the website and register your interest. Like, they, they don't have tickets yet. They're just doing interest. Please. Um, it's going to be great. Yeah, do that. We'll, we'll be down there, like, oh, definitely. definitely. Like, it'll take... Well, we'll have some way to recognize us. We'll yeah. Just... <laughs> And they're also doing a, a Humanity right. Plus uh, conference down in Australia sometime as well. There's no dates, but they're, they're also asking for interest as well. Cool. But that'll be really cool. So check it out. If, you, if you're at all interested, yeah. like definitely register. Come along. I mean, come on, you get to geek out for a while. I mean, how much fun is geeking out? Like, totally. Like, robotics, artificial intelligence. Yeah, hang around. You can just go up to someone and say, dude, what about this? Oh my <laughs> God, how awesome. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. So, uh... I don't see that as a bad thing. I may <laughs> harass you about stuff. Right. Okay. Yay. <laughs> well, I think that's a great way to sign off for uh, episode 23. Yep. Uh, week ending sometime. I don't know what the date is. Yeah. That's great. And uh, yeah, I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. This has been High 45. Catch you next week. <laughs> What's up? All right, see you. What do you think? Beep.